I'm gonna do my thing. Amen. Yeah, I'm gonna do God's thing. <laughs> um, take a moment, say hi to everyone. Hi. Hi, hi. 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 Um, what an excellent time we had yesterday. Um, just the guys gathering together, you know. I've always heard it said, and, and I never understood the importance or the relevance of it, but no offense to you women. But there's something about a humble man. There's something about a man who doesn't have to flex his muscles to know that he's mighty and strong. There's something about a man who can lead and take the blows on the left side and the right side of their cheek and make it through his life and love and persevere. There's something about a man who can be an example to his children and to those around him of how to deal with conflict and how to deal with people in a, in a way that changes hearts and brings unity. Yeah. There's something about a man who's willing to lay down his life for his friends. And the Bible says there's no greater love. And we know that man is Jesus Christ. And as we came together yesterday, I saw men exemplifying or showing the example of Christ. As we came together, you know, old, young, all different kinds of demographics, and we were just one, one in Christ. Amen. And we communed, and it was an awesome breakfast. David, Bean, thank you so much for the, the incredible breakfast. I'm still remembering those buttered English muffins. <laughs> oh, it was good. It was good. Um, but it's, a, it's an awesome time to, to unite. Um, in this time when people have so much disarray and so much confusion and things are getting stirred up and, and you see all this confusion going on with politics and, and all these rioting and all these different things going on in the world. And, and one thing I, I title today's message is God's Word Brings Change. And, and one thing that anyone will tell you, even psychiatrists, that change in and of itself can be stressful. Right? And, and the Lord has... I'm trying to look for brightness on this. My old eyes, I can't see this. All right. uh, but but it's, um, it's a time when, when um, there's a wedding. That can be a joy, a joyous occasion. But that's a change. And it's very stressful. Or it can be a negative thing, you know, a sickness or an ailment. That can be stressful, right? Yet, we, say, we see the Word of God as it's permeated into this earth. It's been brought to bring a change. Jesus came to cause a change. He came to turn this world right side up. You know, I always say he came to turn it upside down. No, he came to turn it right side up. There's a lot of people out there. There's a lot of religions out there. There's a lot of people with doubts in their minds. And they wonder, you know, how could a God who's so mighty and so powerful and so loving, the God of love, the very definition of love, if you want to know what love is. How could he allow these things to take place in this world? Why doesn't he answer to my effort beckoning call? Why, when I pray, does he not hear my cry? It says he hears the cries of his saints. He did. He did. <laughs> There's no religion out there like the true religion of our God, who so loved the world... He gave his only begotten son. To come to wake up this world. There was the word, and the word, you look and you say, but it's, I see all this condemnation in the Old Testament. I see all this. It is the right way. But nobody's living it. We blame God for us. For us. Don't we? It's my wicked heart that was shown I was wicked when I go to the scriptures and say, I'm not right, man. <laughs> I'm not going to do my thing. I know where my thing leads. Not a good place. Doesn't go to a good place. I don't see hearts change. I don't see love. I'm not a good example. I'm not walking through this world in such a way that I'm loving the unlovable. I'm thinking about, I'm going to get me some peace. I'm thinking, I'm going to get me what I need. I'll take what I want. That's how Gary walked. I'll look with my eyes, I'll see and I'll lust, and I'll say, give me some of that. I want what I want. As we enter into the scriptures today, in Acts chapter 19, last week we ended with a very powerful verse. 
It's a very powerful verse. And I kind of glossed over it. We were at the end, and sometimes you say, all right, I see people's eyes glossing over, let's get out. But, but it's um, Acts chapter 19, verse 20. It says, so mightily grew the word and God, of God and prevailed. What does that mean? It means as they dealt with, with people and they were walking in the spirit and the truth of God, being that example, not because they were condemned and they were, there was a tough taskmaster over them beating them, but because they saw the love of the Messiah and they received that pure and perfect love and said, that's how it's supposed to be. That's how this world is supposed to be. United, selfless, pouring themselves out for one another. That's what I want to be. And the word of the gospel was being preached. That yes, though you're a sinner, though there's corruption in this world, though there's hopelessness, I've come to give you hope. I've come to give you a purpose. And I've come to make things right. First in you. In you. You're going to be Christ on this earth. You will walk and be that righteousness you want to see in others. You, I have answered your prayer. Look in your heart. I've entered in to be a beacon of hope. What did they do? You mean I don't have to do this religious act? I don't have to, to bend, kneel, stand, bend, kneel, stand. I don't have to beat myself with a cat of nine tails and, 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 and make sure my good deed outweighs my bad deed. You mean you paid the price? Do you mean I am free from the condemnation of the law? Of my own sin? My sin? People started changing. The word of God prevailed. It's, it's having its purpose in my heart. It started in my heart and it's exploding out. I'm free. I'm free from sin and condemnation. I am now no longer at enmity with righteousness, with the king. All these things I saw in the Old Testament that felt heavy. They condemned my mind. I'm free. And I'm free to go love others. I can walk. You know, you know there's something about when people want to do sports. Or when people want to learn, you know, the gymnastic girl, or you know, you see them do these phenomenal things on the balance beams, and you're going, how oh, the heck did they backflip through? And they're doing all these things, and uh, I forgot who that one lady is from the U.S. The black girl, she's awesome, she's the best ever. But she she didn't start up on that balance beam. She started on the ground on the line, put a little tape across this dance floor, and started doing it on the floor. She had people on either side to hold her up. How much more do you think Christ is expecting of you, baby Christians, and you that are growing in him? Yeah, he wants you to get up on that pedestal. And sometimes that's daunting. Sometimes it seems too much. He's with you. A good father. A perfect father. Not a worldly father who seeks after his own desire. Don't judge God. Let God judge your own heart and let him have his perfect way. And that's what happened in this Athens, in this rich community, super rich. They were just like America. Matter of fact, why did Paul go to these areas? You're going to see. He would pick the very um, prosperous cities that oftentimes were filled with all ideologies, all different kinds of gods and stuff. And he would go there because he knew that if I could get in here, it's fertile ground. And, and all the shipping, and all the, 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 the industries, and all the, whether it was, whether it was um, fruits, or whether it was tapestries, or whether it was um, items of, of, you're going to find out, silver and gold, and the items, it's going to spread quickly. He's smart, you know. I told you when I was little, I sang, my name is Johnny Appleseed, I played Johnny Appleseed in a play. And I still remember the song to this day, and I would try to sing it like Elvis. My name is Johnny Appleseed. Hey, thank you very much. <laughs> I was all of like 10. And, 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 and yet, and yet this, there's something smart about spreading seeds sparingly, but there's something smarter about spreading it in a way that then they'll spread themselves. You come to these horrendous dark areas. Are you in a dark place? Good! You don't know what I'm going to. No, I don't. But I know that if it's tough, it's fertile ground. The darker, the better. That's where seed shoots out. And so Paul's in the midst of this area, and the word prevailed. It 
hit asunder. God says his word does not come out and not hit the mark. It will hit you smack dab between your eyes, or more importantly, in your heart. And show you God. And show you you. And then show you Christ. And say, oh, what a God I have. How good are you? I look at myself, and I look at how I condemn everyone else around me. I look how I condemn myself. And yet, while I was a sinner, while I was at my very worst, you saw me, and you gave your life for me. How many of you, it says, it says very rarely does one give his life for a friend, but how many of you would lay down your life for your enemy? Is God fair? Is God good? Yeah. Yeah. And this word was turning this community upside down. You know, as we look at COVID and we look at all these things that are going on here, we see people releasing from the strongholds that the devil had on them. We see people letting go of material things that they were lusting after. We see people starting to desire communion, coming together, Amen. as they're so far apart all the time. I want to be with my family, you don't understand. And, and back then, before COVID, it was like, yeah, I'll meet you at Christmas, I'll see you at Christmas. Now we're like, man, I just want to see them. We have a yearning in our heart for things that are of value. See, nothing's been taken away from you, but something's been given to you. Truth of what really matters. This community is turned upside down. It said God's words prevail. And it says in verse 21, And after these things were ended, Paul purposed in the Spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Archaea and Jerusalem, saying, After these things, after I've been there, I must go also to Rome. So, again, when we are moving in the Spirit, God whispers to you and God prepares you for the journey ahead. He's already gone there. You may feel, I, this is strange where I'm at. But if you're Spirit-filled, you already knew you'd be there before you were there. Did you ever have that deja vu? Feels like I've been here before. That's God. That's the Holy Spirit who is the prophecy. The one who when it says it's going to happen, it will happen. You can rest assured when God says it, it will happen. The funny thing is, you may have this desire in your heart and not even know why you have it. So I try not to condemn people. You know, I feel called to, to go to the grocery store today and hand out ten masks. Okay? I was in a service the pastor's preaching, and I already had this prompting on my heart. But he had said, there's someone in the hospital. You know, you need to, it wasn't like, there's someone in the hospital with black hair, and I know one of you, you know, it's kind of one of those, those things that the soothsayers say that, that pretty much applies to 90% of the people, so of course it, <laughs> but it's no. God is pricking your heart to someone in the hospital. Then you need to go. Why are you waiting for someone else to go? And I said, you know what? I'm going to go. This has happened to me six times in my life where somebody's been on their deathbed and I've gone to the hospital and the doctor said they're going to die and I've prayed with that person and a miracle took place. They lived. The doctor said, I don't know what happened. It happened to my mom. She's going to die. She lived 12 more years after that event. And she'd been to the top doctors in the world. But she didn't. Why do I say that? Because God meets us where we're at. I had no idea that I would be that, that event would lead to something miraculous. I just knew I was supposed to go. Paul has no idea how he's going to get to where he's going to go here. Little does he know, it's not going to be the way he thinks. He'll be going in shackles to Rome. But remember, the Lord commanded him to go to the Gentiles. And he knew, if I'm going to go anywhere to preach to the Gentiles, may it be in the epicenter of the Gentiles. May it be in the capital of Rome, the Roman Empire. Remember, two chapters back, we learned that, that um, Priscilla and Aquila were ejected with many Jews from Rome. Cast out, because they were stirring trouble. Remember, the Jews were stirring trouble against the Christians. 
And, the, and because there was so much dissonance, because there was so much turmoil in the streets, the Romans said, get them out of here, and booted them all out. But it was because of that, booting out, Priscilla and Aquila were able to come and teach a young, enthusiastic man the ways of God. Right? You don't know what circumstances you're in. You may feel that prompting of the Holy Spirit. You may not know how you're going to get there. But God does. And don't doubt Him because it's not how you think it's going to happen. He, his promises are going to come to pass. Trust Him. How many times is it going to happen in your life before you finally let go and trust Him? Some of you are here and you're like, no, this isn't how I anticipated it. <laughs> you know, I got pulled, I got called, and this is where I'm supposed to be. But I didn't know this was how it was going to happen. I don't know how I will reach tomorrow. I just know the one who's going to carry me to it. So Paul, he has a plan to hit these areas. And once again, his heart is obviously to hit Jerusalem first. Kind of tell his people, my peeps, all what, what's happening with the Gentiles. This is his third missionary journey. He's been successful, or I should say, God's been successful through him. And Silas and Barnabas and all these men that are moving on in faith. One thing you're going to see in this, this underlying precept of this chapter, a pastor is not alone. You know, a lot of people say, that's your job, you're the pastor. You know, that's your thing. I'm just called to do this. Listen. My sister gave me a card this morning, and I read it, and it was a pastor appreciation card. And I was like, oh, that's cool. This is pastor appreciation week, I guess, uh, or a month. Huh. So it's a whole month. We need a whole month because we're so beaten down. <laughs> Love me. But, but, but that's how we feel, right? We think it's all alone. We're islands. We're not. God has not left us orphaned nor forsaken us. He's given us the Holy Spirit, God, to be with us, to comfort us. But he's also given us you, men, women, faithful men and women, who come alongside and gird up on the mission. Not to divide, but in the same purpose. The Bible said they were in one accord. The same goal. To what? To turn this world right side up. To be what you're calling God and saying God's not. He, want, he is so good, he says, I want you to do it. It's amazing how we pray for God to do something. And he says, I know your heart. I know how much you love it. You know, Ryan, I know where you want to be. I know what you want, each and every one of you. I know your goals and aspirations to be, you know, the best. You're riding on his YouTube. He's breaking it. It's awesome. He's got this cool style. God says, I know. I bet he didn't know he'd be up here worshiping three weeks in a row, leading our worship team. Amen. 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 Blessing people. Maybe it's not the people you thought. Maybe it's not the way you thought. But God's doing it. God's doing it. And I'll tell you, when you walk away, there's none of the things that we get when we do it in ourselves. It's just joy. Nothing. No guilt. No shame. He says, I'm going to use you to answer your own prayer. Look what happens. I can't do it. I can't do anything. God, do this. I gave you power to do it. You go do it. Help the poor. Here you go. Go help the poor. Help those who have you know, mental challenges like me. Here you go. I want you to do it. But I got mental challenges. Yeah, go help the others and watch how your mental challenges fade away. Lord, help me with my addiction. Step out and go to rehab. You be the example for the rest. Watch how many people I use, not just to heal you, but you to heal them. So this, this is a miracle that's going on in this area. And Paul's, Paul's got it all planned out of how he's going to do what the Lord's called him to do and go to Rome. And, and so what happens in the midst of all of this? As the word is prevailing, the world is being turned right side up, or in the case of those that had all their, their luxuries in this town of Ephesus, they were living fat and happy, they had their TVs, they had their bonbons while they're eating TVs, they're like me, um, and, they're, and they're fattening themselves up on the couch. And then Christ interrupted their life. It's tough 
you know, when I hear people and I see how Satan plays people, and you're speaking the word of God to them, and they say, but what about this? But what about that? And you're just going, look, you may feel uncomfortable with the word of God at times. You may be uncomfortable with God. But isn't that show that there's something in enmity still in your own heart? It's not him that needs to change. It's me that needs to change. And shouldn't we welcome that? Some of the best times in my life when I've come to see God were those times when he interrupted me. He took my normal routine and he shook it up. What is COVID doing to you? It says that in the United States there's a ton of suicide. There's a ton of people that are, that are going to drugs and alcohol now that never did before. You know, they, or they were there, but now they're really there, right? Why? Is it because God's bad? No. No. I can guarantee you, he says, don't be drunken. He says, don't do this, but be drunken in the spirit of God. Don't follow this. If you do this, you will receive punishment, you know, pain. But is it him? No. It's me. It's me. He says, come follow me. But he doesn't put a chain around your neck like Satan tries to do and put hooks in your heart and your mind and pull you and drag you. He says, come, follow me. If I talk to Premier and I say, hey, Premier, come on up here. Don't come here. <laughs> I guarantee you'd come up here, wouldn't you, buddy? That's right. Why? Because he's got childlike faith. He has a real heart. He says, I know this man's not against me. He's for me. He's never going to hurt me. He would have come running if I asked him. Where are we? Jaded by this world? It's not God's fault. It's our fault. So, he's in this area, and then it says in verse 22, So he sent to Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him, Timothy and Erastus, and put himself to stay in Asia for a season. Paul knew how to delegate. He had support systems. He knew that, that the mission needed to continue, but he also knew this area needed special care. This area was dark, and he was going to... You know, it's funny, because at, at some points in Scripture, it talks about Paul when he's being stoned, and he says, between whether, whether here or whether in here, I don't know. He says, I don't know if I was dead or if I was what, but I, I was taken up into the heavens. And then later on, he says, I have a two places. I want to go be with God in heaven, away from this struggle of this world. But I want to stay here and help those that God's given me love for. And that was Paul's heart. He said, I want to stay here in Ephesus. The work's not done. There's still turmoil here. Yes, the word is prevailing, but there's also an a, 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 a evil force coming against it. And so he sends off two of his ministers, or those that minister to him. You know, you talk about pastors or ministers or reverends or whatever you want to call the person who leads your church. But this tells me, and it says many times, that they were ministered to. We come to church, and rightfully so, to come to God. To receive that which we don't have normally. Love, compassion, gentleness, encouragement. But do you come to lift up your pastor? Do you come to minister to him? Do you come to minister to those around you? Are you coming to say, Lord, what is it you have me to do? Instead of, you know, saying, what, what must I do for my country? You know, <laughs> rather than that, say, what can I do for my country? Amen? And so, he goes on in verse 23 and says, In the same time there arose no small stir in the way. The way of God, there was a, a, a division that started to take place. There were seeds of discord that started to be planted in people's minds. They were once marching in, in, in childlike faith, saved, and then what happens? In comes the, those seeds of doubts, the grapes of wrath, right? They start to plant, well, what about this? What about other gods in the world? What about these other friendly people? What about this? And it says, for a certain man named... Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen, whom he called together the workmen like occupation and said, Sirs, 
You know that by this craft we are all, we are our wealth. Moreover, you see that here that not alone, not alone in Eph at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul had persuaded and turned away much people, saying that there be no gods which are made with hands. What is Paul doing? Teaching the word of God. That the command, the ten, in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt have no graven images, right? Before except before you. I am the Lord thy God. One, true and living God. And they started preaching many multiple gods and all these little legends. And this was his trade. This was this man's trade. What happens when God changes the world and people start walking the way they're supposed to walk? How many industries would hurt in America? How many industries? Think about it. Think about what God says to do and what God says not to do. We talked about one of them. Thou shalt not be drunken, but be drunken in the spirit. Do you think it's in the motivation of a bartender or a bar owner to follow hard after Christ? There's a conflict there, isn't there? A little conflict. What about pornography industry? What about that? What about prostitution? What about all these industries that seek for your soul and to pull you away from the joy of the Lord? That seek to destroy you? How do you think they feel about God? How do you think they feel if you started walking right? If you were like the Christian, this whole town was being put right side up. They were no longer leaning on the, the crux of the world to get through day by day. How do you think some of the psychiatrists would feel? How do you think they would feel, the, those drug industries? What would it do to them? Do you think they're for you? Do you think they're for Christ? Would it impact their industry? Yeah. It would decimate it. It would decimate them. So what do they do? Just like this man, they get unions together. They get people together. They stir up people and say, Christ is bad. Bad for business. <laughs> There's other ways. You know what? This Diana, she's a god. This Diana, if you look at Diana in the Roman, in the Roman God, you know, the Greek gods, she is, she is a twin, you know, of Apollos in, the, in their godhood, and she's the one who's a woman who, who is usually often portrayed in a short dress who has a bow and an arrow. She's a hunter. It's, it's for wild beasts out there, and she also is the protector of virgins. In many regards, you think of how people have taken this vision of Diana and they put it on Mary of the Bible. The Virgin Mary. She's the protector of the, the, the innocent women. It's like, no, Christ is our protector. Christ is our protector. And they're making all these little trinkets, little Dianas, the little bows and arrows, and they're handing them out to everybody so they can go give those as alms or as, as sacrifices. because they're made of silver, which is highly valuable, and they would send that to the shrine of Diana, of the gods, of the Greek gods. And there's a big business. In this town, imagine, uh, you come to this town and you see this gigantic, majestic statue. It's just the most beautiful. It's so artistic. It's so beautiful. And people were coming, it says, from around the world to Ephesus just for this statue, just to see this goddess Diana. All around the world. This isn't just affecting me, Mr. President. This isn't just affecting me, you know, town. This is affecting all your jobs, this Jesus. He's affecting, no, not just our jobs. The whole world. The whole world is going to be ruined if we walk down this Jesus path. Look what's happening here. People are quitting left and right. What happened a few chapters back with the soothsaying woman who was a sorcerer? She came to Jesus, and what happened? The demons that were controlling her life, that were giving her that unnatural power, supernatural power, 
were cast out. She no longer had that. And those that were her pimps weren't making the Benjamins. They weren't making any money. What did they do? They were angry and they stirred up the crowd again, right? Sound familiar? You didn't do anything wrong. All you did was love and give up that which was harmful for you. And now people are angry with you. Now they persecute you and they stir up trouble. Sound familiar? Mm -hmm. It's happening, isn't it? In, in America. People stand up and they just, they're just they not trying to start a fight. They're not trying to start trouble. They're just trying to do what's right. Well, if you're not for us, you're against us. This man is riotous. This devil of the spirit of, of the spirit of devil says that the devil seeks to divide and conquer. It's so much so, they don't even know what they're doing. He's trying to hit all these points. He's trying to hit everybody wherever they're emotional. This is your money. This is your religion. This is, we're going to hit you right where it matters. And he's trying to stir up brothers of like mind so that he can get a, a motley crew to go through the city and start an uproar. And it says, Moreover, verse 26, you see in here that, that not alone in Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, Paul had persuaded and turned away much people. He's, this is going everywhere. This is ridiculous. We've got to stop this before it goes any further. This Christianity, yes, it's ruining us. It's the similar thing. See, is it the Christianity that was doing this? Or was it other people who were being affected by the Christianity coming against it? Who's doing the wrong here? It's not the Christianity. It's people who were losing people because they couldn't hook them anymore. Free people were walking away mm -hmm. from their old lifestyle. Free people were choosing to, to give up those hooks that were once in them. And they were finally singing praise. And they were dancing. And they had a purpose and they had a hope. <clears throat> and there were the captors who wanted those souls back. Sound a little like our politicians, huh? <laughs> I want your vote. <laughs> Once I get that vote, I can, I can care less about you. I need to have power. And so, verse 27, that they, not only this craft is in danger, not just our jobs, he says, but, or said it not, but also at the temple, the great goddess Diana should be despised. Nobody's going to come. They're going to look and say, this needs to be burned down. Did you know this same temple prior to this was burned down? Because Hart said, this isn't right. But then they came and they built it, and they built it even more glorious at, at this time when Paul's coming through. You know, this Jesus, he's ruining the Muslim religion. He's ruining this, uh, the, the, the Buddhist religion. He's ruining, the, he's ruining all these other beautiful religions. People are hooked. He's telling us there's one way to the Father through Christ Jesus. He's telling us that there's an innate sin in each and every one of us that needs to be reckoned and dealt with. And once it's dealt with, it's not a God that you can create with your own head and your own imagination. It's not a religion that I can write a book, you know, on the doctrines of covenants and, and all these weird temples, that I, these weird gold platelets that I find up in Hill Cumorah. It's not something I can conjure up in my own head and fabricate no matter how smart I am. It's beyond you. It's the unseen God. And he's decided to bend down in all his love and all his majesty and hearken unto you. To listen to you. He doesn't want your children's blood. He doesn't want your sacrifice. He says, I want you to come follow me. To peace. To joy. To long suffering, yes, but also to a peace that surpasses all understanding. I want to take you from here and take you to a place where there's no more suffering. I've made a way of escape. But in the meantime, I need you to turn this world right side up with my teaching. And you're going to make an impact. And you can expect there'll be adversaries. It says, Great. Verse 28 again. Um, 
And when they had heard these things, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of, Ephes of, of the Ephesians. This is my town. You know, there's nothing like watching a Bills game. You know, we watch it on TV, and it's one thing I kind of confess that sometimes I can get a little loud in my living room and, and a little emotional, and my emotions can get the better of me. But that's nothing compared to when you're at the stadium. I don't know if you guys have been to the Bills Stadium, but when they start chanting, it's awesome. You can just feel the power. It's almost like you're screaming the, the opposing team off the field. You're, you say, it's my voice, and I'm going to scream as loud as I can. And it's like, Aah! the Bills, back there, want to shout. And you're yelling, and the whole stadium, and everyone's banging on the floor, and it's just rocking. And you're like, man, I hate to be one of those opposing teams in a Bills stadium. Because it's like you see the you see all the, the little security guards in their yellow in their yellow jackets, <laughs> grabbing one person, taking them off. Because people are violent. They've been they've been drinking since you know four hours before the game started. <laughs> Some of them. I'm going to Bills, and there, and there's fights going on all over. You can watch. You see the there's another yellow. And so these guys are all wild, busted after this team. Go Bills, go Bills. And this other, can you imagine being a, 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 one of the teams playing the Buffalo Bills? They said they looked out in the crowd and said, man, this is crazy. It's crazy. It's intimidating. That's a friendly game. <laughs> <laughs> I almost don't want to go to games because of that. I'm like, oh, what am I part of here? I've been to a place where I was out in the crowd and even something that seemingly sounds good, where people are coming together as a clan, and they start chanting. And I'm just sitting there, you know, peaceful, praying to the Lord, and, 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 and sensing his joy, sensing his presence. I'll sell him a song. No, 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 what is this? And, I, and, and it's funny because I was in the midst of it. It was almost like a, a rally for black people, and, the, and it was a white guy there. And he was like the loudest one. He was trying to compensate for something. I'm like, dude, take a chill pill. What's wrong with you? These people were like that. They didn't even know why they were chanting. God, I was just getting wild. They're all out there, and they're like, what is wrong with you? It was confusion. And people were, can you imagine this whole town? It's like it can be heard for miles. These people, rah, 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 you know, this is what this guy did because of his selfishness, his pride, his arrogance. And he went and found other people to come alongside him and stir up and hurt people. Verse 29 says, And the whole city was filled with confusion. And having caught Gaius and Astrascus, Men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord to the theater. Oh, they were united. They were united. Were united. But now, what does this say? Paul had traveling companions. <coughs> he wasn't alone in this. Sometimes we look, we, we look at the pastor and we're like, man, if I was doing it, I would do it this way. You know, this guy's boring. This guy's too loud. This guy too, you know, it would be done. But these, he had traveling companions. He had people that were like-minded for the mission to win souls and free them from their bondage. To get the gospel out at all costs. But the enemy, he's not an easy. He will also unite people for his cause. And they were united. These people had said they were confused. What is, you know, in the military, when you, when, if you've ever seen videos, I have, I have Marine envy. My dad was a Marine. Is a Marine, can't have a former Marine. He's not in his head. And, and I went into the Army because I couldn't swim at the time. My brother became a Marine and he retired a Marine. And, and so I still have dreams in my sleep where I'm going through Marine boot camp mm -hmm. saying, I could do it. I could do it. And I went out on YouTube and I'm watching the Marine boot camps. And what is the first thing they do when you get off those buses? It's the same with all the militaries, but the Marines, they're very good at it. They cause confusion. They get in your face really quick. Run, 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 up, down, up, down, jump back, push back, up your back, lift your back. Why did you go? What's wrong with you? And they cause a lot of confusion in your head. Why? They're trying to make you let go of everything that's you. They want to see how you're going to respond. And by the way, you become much more moldable when you're confused. 
Now you'll do what we want you to do. We want to make you a soldier. I don't know where you came from. doesn't matter where you came from. Satan doesn't care. I just want to make you conform to me with all force, with all violence, with all everything. You will be the best. And, and that's what happens here. These people are all in this confusion. They're like, okay, oh, talk to them in the temple now. And they're dragging a couple people. They don't even know what they're doing. I mean, who's punching a police officer in the face? Who's beating up a black person, knocking them down as a police officer, running by? Them? People who are just going with the mob. Just going with the flow. They're, they're, not, they're not thinking about the future. They're in the moment. Who cares about the life I'm destroying? Who cares about the consequences or the ripple effect of my actions? Go, Bills! Go, Bills! <laughs> Come on. We're held accountable, guys. We have to answer to God. Are you following the mob? Are you stirred up with your emotions because wicked people are getting you to, to get riled up? Or are you steady on a rock? Immovable. I don't care. COVID? <clears throat> Democrat? <clears throat> Republican? <clears throat> Jesus? Let's rise. Let's rock. Let's rock. <clears throat> Let's do this. Let's turn this world upside down. Let's open the eyes of the blind, Lord. Let's change this world. One person at a time. You! You've prayed for it, haven't you? What makes you think God can't use you? What has the devil told you? What are you being pulled to the left or to the right with the mob? Running to the temple? Said in verse 30, and when Paul would have entered into the people, the disciples suffered him not. Paul! It's like Gary, let me in! <laughs> Paul! No, hold back. He had friends. They grabbed hold of him. And I told you guys this once. When I was in the military, I was in um, Korea. And, and I was in military intelligence, but I was attached to the Ranger Unit and, and Special Forces. So I would go out with them. And so we would go to the bars. And then they had the cab in it. The cab was up at the DMZ. And when they got their time of liberty, they would come down and there would always be a little brouhaha between the, the, the rangers and the cab in it. And they would come down and we were in the bar and they came to the same bar where we were at. They're like, uh-oh, it's go time. And I saw the first swing. You knew, it was, you knew it was inevitable. And I was like, let's do this. And I was ready. I was filled with, you know, I don't want to say those swear words that people say. Vinegar. Something in vinegar, right? And I was like, let's rock. I had no fear. It's a mob mentality. It's go time. And I'm getting ready. And just as I'm getting ready, something grabbed my arm. And I felt like every bone in my wrist was crushing. And I turned around to see who it was. And there's a guy about three feet tall, seemingly. And I'm like, good God. What have you been eating? And he says, looks me in the face and says, go. And I knew what he meant. I put my hand down and I walked out the door. Wow. And as I walked out the door, in flies 20 MPs. With my job as a counterintelligence agent, I would have lost my security clearance. I would have lost my whole career if I got busted in that mess. I listened. Paul was ready to go in his strength to make this right. God says, I have a mission for you, Paul. And it was his friends that pulled his shoulders down. Do you think pastors don't need encouragement to stay the course? They're just men. They're just women moving, right? We're all human. We're all human. We need to be alongside one another. Don't think you can do it alone. Don't think you're an island. Yes, God supernaturally will meet you with some little three, three foot, you know, troll or something. I don't know what he was, but it, let, let me go. I couldn't even get away. I'm like, all right, I'll go. <laughs> Paul had friends, support system. It says verse 31, and a certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent him desiring that he would not 
pre-adventure himself to the theater. Paul's reputation had preceded him. They knew that he was tenacious and he would quit at nothing. And he knew that two of his men had been taken captive. And now the leadership around the community came to Paul and said, it's not safe for you here. Don't come. Don't come to this. Don't do it. It's a very hard thing to do, isn't it? To listen to the Lord. You know, sometimes... God tells us, we're like, well, why doesn't, you know, why doesn't some of God do this in this situation? Why is it? Because maybe because they've turned themselves so far from him, he's turned himself from them. He says, you want that violence? You want this? Fine. You have it. And he lets what you've done come upon you. What are you seeking? Where are you seduced? Who's telling you lies? With Paul's case, as he's moving in the spirit of truth to love those around him, even his enemy is coming and warning him. Even his enemy is coming and helping him. Pretty awesome, huh? It says, verse 32, which is where we'll close, some therefore cry one thing and some another, and as assembled was confused. And the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. I don't know. They're bouncing up and down. It's like a mosh pit. They're all bouncing up and down. What? what are you doing? You know, I, I say this, and I'm not boasting on this, but again, I was in the military with a friend. We went to a bar, and, and it was this dark little pit. It was the only place we could find. And he started playing this mosh music. And, and needless to say, I wasn't, I was inebriated. And, and my friend's in there, and there's other people there. And all of a sudden, they started getting in this circle. And, and it's, the lights are flashing, and it's all dark, and we're like the, dancing to this, I think with Depeche Mode, I don't know, one of those weird New Age groups, where we're like, go, 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 we're all doing this circle, and then, and then the first thing that came to my mind was, and it came to the mind of my friend also was, kill, kill, kill. So I walk, we're doing this circle, and I come by, and I'm like, kill, kill. And he's like, we both just fall down laughing, because we were like, that's exactly what we felt. We don't even know what we're doing. We don't know why we're here, but there's this sense of aura of darkness. These people are all together. It says they're so confused. They don't know what lust is propelling them to be here. They just know the consequence of it is kill, 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 kill. What is sin telling you to do? What is sin telling you to do? Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. <clears throat> he who came and did no sin. He who came to win your soul. He who came was perfect in every regards of love, what love really is. It says, come follow me. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will make the way. I have it all and I give it all up for you. <clears throat> that you could have eternity. That you could come to my house. Let me show you the way it's supposed to be. Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. The, the bloodthirsty crowd that was stirred up by the Pharisees as they went around planting seeds of discord, gossiping, backbiting, murmuring. What are we doing? Are you joining people together in Christ or are you part of the problem? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you. We thank you that although there's an adversary who roars like the roaring lion seeking to destroy, you are the lion. We can trust you completely. We know that vengeance is the Lord's. We know that you have everything ordered. You have our path. Help us to walk by faith and trust you for tomorrow, Lord God. We know that you're going to get Paul to Rome, just like you're going to get us to heaven. Nobody's going to miss their destination. You are going to orchestrate all things, and not in a way that we would understand necessarily, but in a perfect way that will affect many and save many souls. Help us, Lord, in our doubt, Lord. As, the, as it said in the Bible, Lord, I believe. Help me in my unbelief. Help me not go to the crowd. Help me not go with the mob, but let me pick, pick the path less traveled. Let me love the unlovable. Let me love even my enemy. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.